Hello everyone, Rosa here at Revit Real Estate. Bree should be joining any minute. Uh, this is going to be our webinar right before holidays and the next one is probably going to be in 2024. I know it sounds funny saying that we're going to meet next year, but that's just literally less than 10, 11 days from now. So um, I hope you're having a great um, time off for your holidays. I hope you have some plans. And I'm sure you guys are going to talk real estate because there has not been a family dinner where I went to where people don't walk up to me and ask, how is the market doing? You know, are you guys still planning on moving? Are you still guys planning on buying your investment? Or if somebody else bought an investment property, it makes you think, man, I can jump on one as well. So uh, today we are going to share with you how we can fasten that conversation for you. Here goes Bree. Hi, Bree. Hello. All right. I was just telling everybody how this is going to be our last webinar of the year. <laughs> it's yeah. sad and weird, but we're 10, 11 days away from 2024. So not that much. So guys, um, super excited to be here today. Today, we want to talk about a couple of things. And I will, I'm going to kind of pass the reins to Bree to introduce the idea of uh, being a, a person who takes lead and navigates the world of real estate with ease. I was just speaking to one of our clients yesterday uh, who are looking to move in April. And imagine we're four months away and we're meeting tomorrow to strategize the move, right? So um, I was explaining to um, that person, the person who's meeting us um, as a seller. And I told them, I said, you know, there's so many people out there who will choose to have security over strategy. And what I mean by that is, they just wanna have a secure move rather than having a strategic move. And let me explain what I mean by that. So I was telling uh, our clients, I said, look, look guys, the moment you have us in your corner, you already have security. We're bringing the experience, we're bringing the education, the knowledge, the proactiveness that you need to navigate this transaction, right? From selling their home to buying the next one in one move and making sure we're not overpaying for it, right? I said, the only time you should be, the only time you should be strategically spending is strategically thinking about what to buy and what will it take for your property to sell? That's it, nothing else. Sometimes, so many people out there that choose security over strategy, they end up paying more for something they should not be. Brie, like, would you quickly um, help everybody understand what is the recast uh, program that we just talked about? If somebody is trying to sell and move at the same time, I think listeners would like to know because they might not be making a move thinking, well, I don't have all the down payment ready. Yeah. So recast is something really cool. Um, so it used to be something where you had to do like a first and second lien right? Or maybe you had to wait and truly sell before you could buy. A recast is where, let's say you have some sort of down payment, let's say it's 5%, right? You put 5% down, you move into your new home, and then let's say you sell your house and you're netting $100,000, and you want to put all of that money into your new property. What you would do, you would just literally call up, you know, the bank, let them know you're going to be putting that $100,000 towards your principal and you want to do a recast. Yeah. What they're going to do is they're going to take whatever your principal was, let's do simple math, 500000 They're going to reduce it by one hundred k to 400000 And then they're going to amortize that over the next 30 years for you. It's a small fee, only like 200 to $300, but it's been really helpful in helping people, you know, buy a property before they before they have to sell. Yeah. And rather than buying a second lien, which can be more closing cost and some kind of prepayment penalty at times, depending upon what kind of lien you have here, they're just letting you recast your whole mortgage balance. Right. How beautiful is this? You know, lenders are wanting to give you money. They're wanting to give you uh, they're wanting to give you anything that will allow you to make a move. You know, yeah. they understand that if they don't lend, they don't exist. So today we want to talk about a couple of things. So uh, before we jump into our identity uh, of what it means to be an investor or a person who is able to make a move in real estate transaction. So Bri, um, could you kind of walk us through like what is the mindset of a person? Like we're working with a couple of people right now who are about to go on the market. They're about to buy their next homes, right? They're about to transact. What is their mindset and habits look like? 
So I think, you know, it kind of depends on what they're looking to do. But if we're talking about someone that is looking to make a move, sell their property and move into another primary residence, the mindset that has been really successful for our clients is to have conversations up front and be prepared. And, you know, kind of, we have a client that um, is looking to make a move. They've been looking, I would say it's been what, maybe three or four months. Yeah. We first met with them, right? So we met with them three or four months ago and they really wanted to make a move, but you know, they had to find something that they liked, right? Yeah. Um, and they finally did. And now we're able to go under contract with them and then literally be ready to go on the market within a couple of days because they've already done the prep work up front. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that, you know, sometimes we say, oh, I'm not ready to make my move now. But what happens when you finally find the property that you've been looking for, rather than having to scramble with the lender, scramble to get your house ready, scramble to meet with the stager, scramble to clean up, right? You now all have all of these things that are ready to go. And you can literally just put them in a, a quick, I always like to say a nice little bow, right? And say, bam, 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 this can be done in a week and we can go on the market. And it helps with your negotiation. If you're wanting to do a contingency and you are not ready to go on the market at all, that's not going to look as good rather than us saying, hey, we're ready to go on the market. As soon as we execute this contract, we'll be on the market in the next three days. Yeah. And like, when, I, when I, I'm so glad you brought this up. Bri, but let's spend some time here. Um, let's go back to that three month old conversation that we had at a dining table with them. Right. This person, this client of ours was actually looking to sell one property, move into a bigger property so they can help their parents uh, live with them. Right. So there was a family dynamics at play here that we needed to be in consideration for. When we met on that day and we were having the dining table conversation, there were three major ways we were looking to make it happen, which involved things like refinancing, remodeling a big project of a home or buying a brand new property. Now, when we walked into the home, there was only one way we were thinking about making that move. But when we walked out, we realized there were three ways we can make it happen. And oftentimes I feel like there are so many people in the marketplace, they don't make a decision because they don't know what they're going after is the best way. And fortunately, the only way no, only way you will ever find out that this is the best way to do it is by sitting with someone who understands more than one strategy to make it happen. Like in real estate where we where we have grown our business in less than in last 15 years or so, we have over 12 strategies on how one person can move from one house to another property. Over 12 strategies on how someone can sell a property, regardless of what condition it is in, what financial situation it is in, and what kind of appreciation it is in. Now, what's best for you can only come out when you decide to meet with us. And we're able to lay out your options. And now you know the option that you have thought of is the best one. And sometimes that's all it takes. If you know it's the best option for you, you will make them. Like for this client, right, Brie? Like it was funny when we were doing the comps on the property to write an offer. Correct me if I'm wrong. The way the elevation of the house looks, isn't it similar to the way our client was looking to remodel oh. one of the properties? Yeah. Yeah. I was like, what a, like, it was, I was having a deja vu moment. I don't know if it's supposed to be deja vu or not, but the, the fascia of the house, the front of yeah. the house has a very similar look to what he was planning to remodel his existing property to. And yeah. it is way cheaper I to watch. buy a newer property in today's market on over an acre land and have everything ready to go. Yeah. Not even struggle through contractors banging on the wall while you're living in the house, dust everywhere, you know, tile cracking, breaking, like all that crazy stuff that comes with it. Moving all the stuff out just to move it all the way back in, storing it somewhere. And every error while you're fixing something up adds to the cost. Here, you know what you're walking into and it's a fixed cost for you. Yeah. So... Now, let's see what it means for our investors. Brie, like if there were three things our people did, right? They met with us, right? They evaluated their options and they started the lender conversations. We knew based on our meeting with them and um, evaluating their conversation with the lender, we had the three strategies that we came up with on how they can make a move. 
Now that made it easy for them to say yay or nay to a property as they were coming along, right? As they were working with you. And a similar case for another person of ours who is looking to buy an investment property, but they're now switching to buying another homestead because they're realizing that this is an opportunity to move in. So what would you say to investors? Like you walk, you walk and talk with them every single day, right? What is the identity and a characteristic of an investor who's looking to buy at least their first rental property this year? Like what should be their habits and behavior be like? I think it's really something very simple that you wouldn't expect me to say, but I will say this out of, you know, anyone who owns at least three or more doors, right. And has bought and sold with us and has investment properties. The number one thing that they do, they have a 97% open rate on our investment emails. So 97% of them are opening on a weekly basis, every single week. Wow. And I will say for people who haven't had any, who haven't bought any investments and maybe they've had a conversation or they've maybe just raised their hand and said, I'm interested. They have a 12% open rate on our weekly emails. Wow. Yeah. Just opening. Just opening. You know, I think let's talk about this real quick, right? You know, there's so many people out there and I'm not, we're not one of them. Here's why. Because we don't have that kind of content to just copy paste and send it out to you guys. You know, we have never been the company who actually puts people on some kind of campaign and hope they're doing okay. And, you know, I'm like, hey, here goes your recipe for um, baking a cake. And in case you want to sell something or buy something, I'm here. We're not one of them. You know, our baking recipe is to show you how your down payment has been baking and appreciating. Yes. Yes. Rhi, what do you have to say on that? Like, what does that look like for us? You know, I think the most important thing is to really provide true value for anyone that, you know, we talk to, right? Yeah. Um, and so I think that by doing, by pulling the weekly emails for the investments, that is a big value add and something that is very unique that I don't see really anyone doing where they're pulling the true data. So I think that, you know, if you have the opportunity to open it, start a simple habit on Friday or Saturday morning, find, you know, a special spot, right? Open the email, take a look at that. And then you can give yourself a reward after, right? Whatever the reward yeah. looks like for you're you. Not even, you're not even doing any homework after that. We have done all no. the work for you. Just look at the homes and say, hey, I like this. Yeah, I I can make a couple hundred dollars extra positive cash flow from this right away. And guess what, guys? We are doing the heavy lifting for you on a quarterly basis. This year, before we end the year, we actually worked with the team and pulled out everybody's mortgage statements on how much mortgage they have on the property, how much down payment they have put into the property when they bought it, and actually individually, one by one, and we have hundreds of clients, guys, one by one, sending out everybody's internal rate of return. Now, Pri, do you want to share with everyone what does that look like? How are you going about it? Like, what is the internal rate of return for a person who has put like $50,000 down and has X number of payment going up and today they can sell for a property for a Y amount? What does that look like? Explain to everybody. So basically what we're looking at is we're looking at what down payment did you put into the home? What kind of principal pay down or rent are you getting on a yearly basis? What you can sell your home for and what percentage, what percentage uh, return did you get on your money whenever you bought your property? And you'll be surprised at the numbers that we are seeing. I mean, there's nowhere that you can go and get a 25% return on a, on anything like Show me, show me something else that you can get a 25% return or 35% return. I don't know anything. And you can touch the, and hold that asset. I yes. mean, stocks can on a good year give you 20, 30%. You can't touch it. You can't feel it. No. You can visit it. Here, you can visit your, you can date your asset. You know, you can go and say hello to your asset and say, hey, thank you for making me a 30% return on my money for holding it year after year after year. So, um, and guys, we're not discriminating in this between we're only going to do it for our investors. We're actually doing it for our home buyers. 
Like somebody who took advantage of a zero dawn program. Yeah. Their yeah. rate of return, like it's all green. Like you yeah. brought nothing to the table and just made the mortgage payment every single month that you would have paid as a rent as well, right? But now you got to see your principal go down and your property appreciate. That is your true wealth in real estate, yeah. right? They didn't walk into a home with any money, but when they're going to sell it, they're going to walk away with money. Yep. Yeah. That yeah. is real estate. So guys, today I want to just emphasize this with Bree that you are going to look at properties on the market and you are going to say, you know what? It's higher payment than I can afford right now. You're also going to look at investments on the market and you're going to look at it. This doesn't look like the cash flow that will retire me. I promise you, rental properties portfolios are not to offset your expenses now. It is the money you're putting in your future. And if you have a good W-2 income and good credit score, you should be taking advantage of that and compare how does that money appreciate sitting in a home versus sitting in a duplex versus a quadruplex versus stocks and bonds. And then you compare because what we bring as an experts to the table is a comparison. Comparison between assets. Comparison between the different strategies to move from one home to another. So Brie, um, let's talk about this. You had pulled out, prop pulled out properties that are in great location but they showed negative cash flow because of the interest rates. Now, what is a remedy to that? Do you want to talk about that real quick with everybody? Yeah. Uh, you want me to share my screen? That would be great. Okay. So I pulled, oh, if I can find it. Here we go. I pulled some properties in really great locations. Like these, I, these two right here are in Austin proper. And like 10 minutes away from the domain, right? Mm -hmm. But we're looking at negative cash flow here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, and we have this property, let's say in Leander, right? Very close to 183, but mm -hmm. we're negative cash flow. Mm -hmm. So one the thing negative cash flow at 25%, right? At 25%. Yeah. And if they want to make it positive cash flow, they can just put extra 10% down and they can experience positive cash flow right away. Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. Or you can experience negative cash flow. $500 a month, only 6,000 a year, or you can put down, you know, extra ten percent more. Yeah. Yeah. It's and mind you, uh, all of this is just at no rate buy down. Like we have a calculator to the right hand side where we are actually sharing. There is a program called list and lock program guys. A lot of sellers are opting into it because they're willing to buy the rate down for the end buyer. So with the list and lock, uh, lock, program for the sellers. Pri, could you walk us through how this is break down here? How this? Yeah, how this is broken down. So basically, um, you just click on whatever, you know, property you yeah. want, how we're going to negotiate it, uh -huh. whatever payment we want to do, and we can change our interest rate. So before we're probably at 7.5, we're negative cash flow. But mm -hmm. maybe with the list and lock, we can get it down to 5.5%. Yep. Yeah. Then we have positive cash flow. Yeah. And the first year principal pay down, which is the true money that a tenant is paying off for you, is 31, 32. So basically, the very first year, your internal revenue is $3,064. And it changed. Can you show us? Wow. It changes annually. This is just 25% down, not even 35% down. Right, Bree? Mm-hmm. 25%. You change that to 35% down. Wow. Look at this. Changes right away. Yeah. Wow. So basically, if if somebody is, let's suppose, can, can we look at the numbers real quick? How much money are they bringing down uh, to buy this property? What is the down payment? 118000 Okay. So if you're bringing $118,000, we're not even calculating the appreciation. We're only looking at the rental and the principal pay down. Every year, you're going to get a $5,000, $6,000, $7,000 incremental rate of return, right? Then on top of it, a $339,000 property. Can we look at how the properties appreciate to the right-hand side? The equity gain? 
Look at that. So 339 property has a potential to become a $444,000 property, which our Austin market has proven over and over again that it does that, right? So every year you're making five to $6,000 positive internal return plus $100,000 in five years, you're looking at good, wow, $130,000 to $140,000 gain on your yeah. money. Yeah. And this is why our internal rate of return- numbers. Huh? These are conservative numbers. That we These are, are conservative doing. numbers, yeah. So um, guys, I think um, now, Brie, like for people who are not able to see this uh, as a like, well, I don't know, I still like positive cash flow. Where would you tell them to buy? Okay, you want positive cash flow? I have the place for you. I'm going to share my screen again because I, I want you it. to see where the money is. You want positive cash flow? Come to Temple. Come to Belton. Look at this. 256 wow. a month, 413 a month, 149 a month, 142 a month. Wow. Can we look at the principal we pay down on these properties? Like, can we pick one? Yeah, sure. Let's look at... Let's just look at Liberty Hill Drive, okay? okay. Mm -hmm. uh, 223, let's just say 223. Let's just say we can do 7%. Very conservative, yeah. Yeah. Look at this. Wow. And how much did they bring down to the table? One six, oh, 55,000. So this is almost 10% return on your money, right off the bat. Mm-hmm. So the property that are requiring higher down, they're also in the prime areas like Austin zip codes, right? right? So you're not going to experience the same kind of down payment there. Wow, guys, um, I think it's very self-explanatory. So you're saying the investors who are actually able to buy properties, they have 97% open rate on their emails. And the ones who are not, they're 12%. Mm -hmm. Wow. And the ones who are opening, what is their feedback on the sheet? Like, are they asking us to change anything or do you feel like they're getting every answer they deserve here? No, the only feedback I'm getting is very positive that it's, you know, we have, we're looking at things that not many people even look at, right? So we're not only looking at one aspect of like positive cash flow, which is what most people will think about, but we're looking at that internal rate of return. We're looking at our rental cash flow. We're looking at our appreciation. We're doing a whole 360 of anything and everything that you can be looking at with investment opportunities. Um, and if anyone ever has questions about the sheet, please pick up the phone. Let's have a conversation. Let's have a Zoom call. We're happy to walk you through it. So that way you have the full understanding and you can look at, you know, the properties and pick for yourself which one you like. Yeah. And these are the properties that are not requiring an arm and a leg amount of repairs. Like these right. are ready to move in properties, right? right? Okay. So, so compare your investments to that. You know, um, today Roger is not here uh, because he's doing other work for our business. And, um, but we don't want to leave you guys without a market update. So I want to quickly share a screen and share the market update on what's going on. And, um, uh, well, man, I cannot compete with Roger on how he delivers the news, but we can both do a pretty good job. So Bree, help me out here. Um, once again, this is straight from Austin, you know, Texas AM and a and research. This is from CoStar, like all the resources that Roger has tapped into. So Texas stands out for the population growth again, and we added 473,000 residents while Florida was right behind us around 365,000 residents, you know, and North Carolina and Georgia are the states right below that. So it seems like Texas is still topping in terms of how many people are moving here. So investing in Golden Triangle has become a great strategy. Uh, now the Texas A&M, they do report a 34% decline in land sales in Hill Country region, coupled with 25% increase in prices. Now, this is also softening in lending and sentiments of both buyers and sellers who are awaiting favorable interest rates. Now, can we take a pause here? Bree, what do you have to say about the favorable interest rates? In what form are they presented to the buyers in today's market when they do see favorable rates? Like, what is the rate? Yeah, like, I mean, when people say, oh my God, I got a really good deal. What are builders doing and what are sellers doing to make it great? Oh, they're buying it down. 
Builders are buying it down. Sellers are buying it down. You know, we have lock and list programs. So you want a good rate, buy it down. Everyone is buying it down. I'm going to make, I'm going to call it the DoorDash rate. Here is how I, I just came up with this right now. Okay. There are two types of people out there. The one who says, well, you know what? It's raining. I know it's traffic out there, but I really want uh, the hot Italian uh, lasagna from the famous local restaurant uh, that's like 20 minutes drive from here. So they're going to wait for the traffic to go down and they're going to wait for um, the rain to go away so it's safe out there. And they're going to go over to the restaurant, maybe call in advance if they're smart. They're going to go over to the restaurant and they're going to say, you know what, uh, it's already eight o'clock. Why don't you pack it to go? I know you guys are about to close. And they're going to drive all the way back home and eat their dinner at 930 because if you're in Austin, just know it takes 40 minutes to go anywhere, even if it says 20 minutes. But they're going to be a DoorDash buyer. They're going to say, oh, it's raining. Mm, traffic, too much. I'm not going to get on the highway and I'm not eating at 9.30 at night when I can order my food right now at 7 o'clock. They're going to go to DoorDash and they're going to pay a little fee and they're going to deliver their food hot and nice. And if it's not, they can have the oven ready and kind of heat it up a little bit more and enjoy a great meal and be done by 8, 8.30 and enjoy a nice movie with their family. This is what's the difference between people who are saying, you know what? I'm not going to wait for interest rates to go down. I'm going to buy it down now. Or I, I'm going to wait for the interest rates to go down because by the time they're going to go down, we're going to pay a really high price, which we're starting to see in some areas already. So the question is, are you someone who's taking advantage of what's in the market, door dashed to you, or you're going to wait to drive for, for the market to go up and allow for the rates to go down and pay more, right? So uh, Brie, anything to add to that? No, I'm door dashing all the way. Door dash your right down. <laughs> okay. And um, now the booming areas um, are just more than our major employers now, right? HEB is the current largest employer in Hill Country, nearly 23,000 employees, which is an indicator, uh, indicator of our population growth. And they're opening new stores. So if the grocery stores are expanding in Austin, Pflugerville, and Maynard, that tells us more people are wanting to order groceries. And we just talked about DoorDash. More groceries, people, more people. I always want to tell people, HEB, you know, it's like... Um, it's a cult in Texas, right? It's the, it's the grocery <laughs> store of Texas. Everyone loves H-E-B. People that work for H-E-B, they never leave. Let me tell you what. They Fine. do not say H-E-B. I had someone, true story, was a vet tech, okay? Went to school to be a vet tech. Quit vet tech job, works for headquarters at H-E-B now, making so much more money. They treat the employees really well. Love H-E-B. Wow. So if somebody loves HEB and HEB says, hey, I think I need to expand my location. That means there are more population coming here, more settlement, more groceries, more households coming, which is always a great indicator of uh, market doing well. And, and just imagine HEB is not waiting for the market to get better and then expand. They're expanding now because they know their expansion is not a 200 square footage expansion. Their expansion is 127,000 square footage. They might as well buy it now than later. So this is the, yeah. Go for it. I have, I have inside scoop on something. Please, uh, please. You know, my husband works for a real estate development company, not in real estate. He's an accounting guy. Don't get excited. Um, <laughs> they are about to develop another property, mixed use property, similar. Everyone says domain, more like Mueller. Let's yes, say. mixed use, yeah. Mm -hmm. In Round Rock, off of 1431, land has already been bought. It is starting next year. Now they're not waiting for the market to go better, right? Okay. You move now. So what Brie was showing you is that, okay, if you don't like the prices right now, move to outskirts, buy on the outskirts and get your footprint now. So when the market takes a wave up, you're already there and you're going to catch the wind. Like some of our investors who are waiting for a new builder to build properties and they were taking forever, our clients moved their money. They said, I'm not going to wait for another year for you to build a property. They're telling us, move our contracts, find us opportunities now. Yeah. This is awesome.
Perfect. Great. I love hearing that. Now, um, same thing, you know, the KPMG International CEO Outlook reveals 87% of the CEOs will reward employees for returning to the office. So office might start doing well. And 64% aiming for a full return by year end. So not only we are seeing more expansions for developments, we're also seeing companies in wanting people to come back to the office so they can increase their uh, productivity in some areas because I bet in architecture, a person is going to need a team to come together on a round table to make something happen. They might not be as productive on a Zoom call, right? So how the quality of the work is or the type of the work is might ask for people to work from home or go back to the office. So keeping an eye open on that too. So we're not just blindsided by it. Now, Austin's substantial investments, including demolition and redevelopment of convention center and significant expenditures on the airport are expected to leave a lasting impression on visitors. I think Roger talked about it last week where we had Austin Birdstrom Airport that is adding international terminals and adding billions of dollars of development. So guys, this is our webinar of 2023, right before holidays. And, um, you know, I think, um, I told Breed uh, just the, today, I said, you know, I, I, it was my birthday this week. And I was telling her, I said, you know, every year I get birthday wishes from someone that I have never met before. And it seems like we're just adding to the people we know and people we make an impact with. Um, so we don't see real estate as a business, guys. Real estate is not just a business for us. It is a way for us to show up in your life where we're able to find you a place to call home, a find you an investment that will carve the path of success for you in your future and bring ease to you uh, in your future times. So um, we truly enjoy what we do. Otherwise, I don't know, like just yesterday, uh, somebody was telling me um, and meeting them tomorrow about their property. They said, you know what? I was asking them, what would they like to see in their real estate professional when they work with them? They said the way Brie has shown them properties and sent them videos, they said, we already know you are someone who care for us. Um, nothing added needed. I think just the, be the way you are and we would be happy. And it was gratifying. It was gratifying to see that you guys experienced the love and care we have for you all. Um, so I hope you guys have great holidays. I hope you were able to listen to this on your drive back home and kind of uh, get your spouse to tune in to these conversations and allow us to make a difference in 2024. And um, Brie, Anything from you, uh, anything you want to say, say to our listeners about where we are this year and where we are headed? You know, I first just want to say thank you to everyone that we've met, you know, in the last 10 years of doing this. Like, I could have never imagined meeting so many awesome people and having these fun experiences with everyone, helping them grow their wealth in real estate, whether it's through their primary home or investment properties. Um and I'm really excited for 2024. You know, I feel like we're going to have so many more connections and be able to really build great relationships with the people that we already know and expand upon them. So I just invite everyone, you know, give us a shout. We love chatting with you. We love helping you. And let's have a conversation and see what your goals are and see how we can help you achieve those goals in 2024. Yes. Guys, I will say one thing before I leave. If in 2021, uh, you want to adopt one habit, you want to stack one habit, I would say make that habit to set up a time to talk with us or open our emails. That's it. Everything else will fall in place. Everybody who transacted this year, they had a better solution at their doorstep because they were doing one or both. They were either in conversations with us, they didn't go silent, they didn't ghost out, and they didn't become blind to the emails coming to them. So this is special work done for you. It is not an email campaign we're running. We truly generally work hard to make sure we show up with you um, 10 steps ahead. So I hope you have great holidays. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year's. We'll see you in 2024. And we will be thrilled to go on an amazing journey and ride with you. Thank you for being a part of our lives. Happy holidays. Happy New Year. Bye. Bye.